we are going to be doing our basic cleaning on the Taurus small frame revolvers. Now these steps will work regardless of what small frame revolver you have, whether it's a three inch and or a two inch and regardless of the caliber. You will need to be careful if you are using one of the 22 models because you wanna be cautious about dry firing those excessively. However, here what we have are two 856s. These are in 38 special. One is the well-used executive grade model, which definitely needs a cleaning, and the other is this three-inch Defender model. One note about the differences in these two guns is the executive grade does not have a hammer spur, and the Defender does. It is a little bit easier to lubricate guns with a hammer spur, which we'll get to when we get to that step. Now, first things first, we wanna make sure that both of these guns are unloaded, so we're gonna pick them up, we're gonna press that cylinder latch forward, move the cylinder out of the gun, and visually inspect both the chambers and the barrel. We wanna look down that barrel, make sure that there's no obstructions, nothing in the bore. And we'll do the same with the Defender model. Again, we pick it up, press forward on the cylinder release, and then push that cylinder out of the window with our support hand, checking all six chambers. Once we know that the guns are cleared out, I'm gonna go ahead and close this cylinder and set this one aside for now. We're gonna focus primarily on the executive grade. Now the process for cleaning these guns is very straightforward. I start from the cylinder and work my way into the frame. First things first on the cylinder, we wanna make sure that we're addressing our important areas. Those important areas start here with the extractor star and the area under the extractor star because fouling building that builds up under the extractor star is going to tie the gun up and cause problems. The next area we want to look at to clean will be here on the front of the cylinder. Any carbon and lead fouling that's on this we want to go ahead and remove. So let's get started with cleaning the cylinder using our solvent. We're going to give a nice spray here on the face of the extractor star and a spray here on the face of the cylinder. We wanna make sure we get enough of that on there so that when we use our metal brush, we're able to effectively remove any fouling. When we do this, we're gonna put our fingers through the frame and we're gonna scrub down and away from the gun so that gravity will help us remove any falling particles off of this. Then we'll go under the extractor star and perform the same actions, using our brush to drag any fouling and particles away from us. Then, turning the gun over, we can scrub down this cylinder face. Rotating the cylinder each time to make sure that each of the individual faces of the chambers are brushed before we move on to the next step. Once we've scrubbed down the cylinder face, the extractor star, and the area under the star, we wanna take our rag and we wanna wipe away any remaining solvent that we have on the gun. The reason we wanna make sure that that solvent is off the gun is solvent can attract debris, and debris is bad for revolvers. So once we've removed that solvent, the next thing we're gonna turn our attention to is gonna be the actual inside of the charge holes or the chambers themselves. The easiest way to do this that I found is to take a a bore snake in the appropriate caliber, whether it's 9mm or 38 special for one of those guns or for a larger caliber gun, obviously a different bore snake, and we're just going to run it through, we're going to feed it through all six of the chambers individually. This will remove any remaining fouling from the chambers and make sure that gun's nice and clean. On smaller frame guns, it's important for you to place your index finger or something else over the yoke to make sure that you're not exerting too much forward pressure while you pull this through. So keeping my index finger in place here, I can go and pull this through each of the six charge holes one at a time, making sure that they're nice and clean and free of any excess lubrication or solvents. This is a bit of a time consuming process, so it takes a little bit longer to keep your revolver clean than it does to keep your semi-automatic pistol clean. And it's important to keep your revolvers clean because unlike a semi-automatic pistol, which is tremendously tolerant of abuse, revolvers are not. They have small intricate surfaces that are sensitive to debris and fouling. So it's very important to make sure that you're taking care every couple of hundred rounds to keep your revolver clean. 
Now that we've gone through all six of the chambers, we can turn our attention to the frame parts of the revolver that also need to be cleaned. We're going to start with the face of the revolver where the firing pin protrudes through the frame and makes contact with the cartridge. This area, as you can see, has a little bit of fouling built up on it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our solvent again, give that a quick spray, and then we're gonna get back to work with our brush. Once that's been cleaned off, we're gonna wipe it free of any excess lubrication. giving us a nice clean face right there for the firing pin to come through. From there, it's time for the extremely important forcing cone. This again is where the bullet actually enters the barrel. So we wanna make sure that this is as clean and free of debris as possible. Now, I mostly shoot jacketed ammunition through this, so there's not a lot of lead fouling that's been built up. However, if you shoot a lot of lead ammunition, you're gonna want to use a solvent that's specifically designed to remove lead residue, or a tool like the Lewis Lead Remover to remove that lead residue from the forcing cone. However, since we're just shooting jacketed lately, I can use our standard solvent, spray that over the forcing cone, and again, get to work with the brush. Once that's done, we're gonna wipe that area down, make sure it's dry of the solvent. And because us brushing that down allowed solvent to move down the barrel, we can immediately go to dragging that bore snake through our barrel. Again, if you're shooting a lot of lead ammunition, a simple bore snake may not be sufficient. You may wanna get something a little bit tougher, like an actual brass brush to pass through here. But in this case, the boar snake will definitely get the job done in getting that barrel nice and clean. Now that we have cleaned the cylinder face, we've cleaned the entire cylinder, cleaned the forcing cone and dragged the barrel, we can actually go about the process of lubricating the gun. On stainless steel guns, you may get some carbon built up here in the flutes on the cylinder. That's cosmetic. It would take a lot of carbon fouling building up in those cylinder flutes to actually stop the gun from working. If you like to clean that off, a little bit of oil and a rag will take it right off. If you're like me and you like your guns to be a little bit well used, you can leave that fouling on to let people know that you actually shoot your guns. So now from here, we can get started on that process of lubrication. To get this gun lubricated, we're gonna make sure that we're taking care of the metal on metal contact points that are both on the exterior of the gun and the interior of gun. First off, we're gonna make sure that the cylinder rotates freely. There should be no binding or sticking as you rotate it with your hands. And to make sure that we keep it that way, we're gonna take our lube and we're gonna put a single drop here on the ejector rod and let gravity do its thing and pull that lube down into the ejector rod channel. And then we're just gonna articulate that plunger a few times just to make sure that lube moves through there. We're gonna put another drop of lubricant here on the face of the cylinder where it actually interfaces. Let gravity pull that down into the gun and maybe rotate the cylinder a few times to help spread that lubrication around inside the revolver. Once we've done that, anything that's excess or left over, we can just kind of take off with the cloth. And that will move us on to lubricating the actual internal parts of this gun. Now a certified gunsmith or armorer could remove the side plate and do this. However, for your basic field maintenance, I'm gonna show you a couple of quick tricks that you can do at home to lubricate the actual internal parts of this. So with the cylinder back in the gun, this is a lot easier to do if you have a gun that has a hammer spur because you'll actually either cock the hammer back or hold it back like this. On a gun like the 856, this is where it's very important to make sure your gun is unloaded because we're gonna have to pull the trigger a little bit to get this done. You'll pull the trigger until you get the hammer most of the way back, then take your lube and put a drop down the front of the hammer face, a drop on each side of the hammer like that, and then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna articulate the hammer back and forth. You'll notice I'm not dry firing the gun here. I'm just pulling the hammer back and letting it go. Pulling it back and letting it go. We don't need to actually dry fire it to get this to work. We just need to move the hammer several times. 
The last point of lubrication that we want to hit on the 856 is we want to hit the sides of the trigger here with a drop and here with a drop. And we want to let that sit for a second to work its way upwards, relatively speaking, into the gun. Once that's worked its way into the internal parts of the gun, we can turn it over. And here we're going to dry fire the gun six to 12 times to make sure that lubrication is fully spread around the inside of the gun. Now that we've lubricated it all across the surfaces, we can go ahead and take our rag and we can wipe down any excess oil that may have not found its way into the parts of the gun that we want it to. As you can see with a revolver that has a hammer spur, that process is going to be a lot easier because I have this physical hammer spur to manipulate and I don't have to touch the trigger unnecessarily. That's it though. The basic cleaning process for a small frame revolver is simple and straightforward. Again, it's important to remember that these revolvers are very tolerant of neglect, not abuse, so make sure you're taking the time to keep your guns clean so that they'll be good to go when you need them.